everyone, welcome to CQ Gaming. In this episode, we're going to be taking a good look at the Imperial Fists Codex that's just been released. Showing the folks at home, man. Um, let's dive straight into it. Bit of fluff for you guys first. As always, we don't want to spoil too much of the. Uh, I'll give too many teasers away. Go out and go and get the Codex, have a good read of it. Some of the good law in there. Um, for you guys at home, though, Rogaldon, it's the Primarch, it's the 7th Legion. And they are based on Phalanx, which is their home world. It's a battle station. It's uh, situated in the Inuit system. Um, they also have the adopted home world of Terra. That's because during the Horus Heresy, uh, they were tasked with defending the Imperial Palace. They were indeed. Yeah, they were indeed. Um, so these guys, because they uh, like defending things and, uh, and blowing buildings up, should we say, they are siegecraft mentality. Um, they also begrudgingly had, uh, adopted the Codex Astartes from Gilliman. He wasn't too happy about it, it was Dawn, but never mind, it's one of those. And currently their, their master, chapter master is Gregor Dessian. Uh, so we know these guys, potentially from this Codex, hopefully what you'll see is they like objective cannon, they're pretty hard to remove, they're a stubborn stain, and they love build, uh, blowing buildings up. Um, we'll jump straight into One thing to mention though, in this codex as well is not just the imperial fist it has the successor chapter for the crimson fists which is good in one respect you get a bit more bang for your buck when you purchase this but at the same time um it's a bit of a loss because maybe the crimson fist could have had their own codex at some point in future time it was expanded on that no mark the department here yeah. No, they got, he said no. <laughs> they, exactly, yeah. They said no. He said no. They got done in by the Orcs. Everyone knows it. Yeah. Don't leave all your bombs in one room. Yeah. Simple. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's that war on Rin's world, and then uh, uh, I think Chaos with the Demon Prince also had a bit, bit fun on there as well with them guys. But as I say, successor chapter. But what we want to do is dive straight into the, uh, to the stats and have a look at. Uh, at the uh, characters that they're going to be rocking. So you get a few, uh, three characters in this one, mm. uh, which is better than what we've seen previously. Better than one. Yeah, better than one. Um, so straight in, Captain Lysander. Do you want to read the stat lines or have a, which picks of stat lines do you think are very interesting there? Yeah, well, guy? he's 130 points, which is cheap, really cheap for what he is. So Terminator armor, two plus save, and he's also got a three plus and vulnerable save, which is great. It's, he'll be so tough to get rid of. He really will. He hits on twos and he's real on ones with a strength 10. So his big bad boy hammer gives him plus six strength. Plus six strength, minus three AP, three damage. That's a big hit. Yeah, why big... not? 130 points. 130 points, the rest of his task is good. Six wounds and four attacks. Yeah. Now the good that that all just looks like it looks average. It looks yeah he's alright. He's a, he's a he's a slam captain with a good save. The the real good thing is his warlord trait. His warlord trait is he can't be wounded on a one two or three. Yeah, that's big. So he's always got a toughness value of half of whatever he's getting hit by. So he's always getting wounded on a four five or six. Yeah, which means he's going to stay around for longer, doesn't he? Really? Yeah, it's wicked. You, you come you add that. Six wounds and also a three plus and vulnerable save. He's a toughie. Yeah, it's, uh, I think he's got some staying power by the, by the sounds of it. And certainly to get that guy into hand to hand, I think he uh, might be a bit handy. Yeah, say. he was always good. He was always good. He's always reliable. And he re roll hit rolls of one for attacks made by models in friendly Imperial Fist units in six inches. And that's an existing model that's on there as well for Captain Iceland, I believe. Yeah, he hasn't changed. Yeah, there's no change on the model there. Uh, flipping the page over. Uh, we've got Tor Garadon. Or Garadon. Garadon. He's the new Garadon. model. Yes, he is the new model. He looks like chip. Toy soldiers. Tell you what, he's got a strong chip. Hasn't he? What a jawline. That <laughs> he's got a superhero's chip. Uh -huh. What a jawline. He likes. He look, he's desperate Dan, the pie man. That's what it is. Got a moustache on him. Like cow pie. That's what it is. Yep. <laughs> um, Tor Garadon, so he's 140 points. Um, Stop lines on. You know what? He's better than Lysander on stat line simply because he's got toughness 5, 7 wounds and 5 attacks. Hitting you on 2s, but with his big bad boy fist. I'm not going to lie, if you know the model, he looks like he's got a bit of a Jeremy Beadle hand. Uh, he's, got, he's, got, he's got the punching fist and then the tiny hand. Uh, so I look at the model and just think Jeremy Beadle. 
Um, yeah, the he reason he jumped why... out the bushes at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, he's got the hand of defiance, which is actually times three his strength. So he's hitting you on strength twelve. Wow, wow, wow. It's good. It's good. Minus three AP, three damage, but it's minus one to hit. Which means he's hitting you on threes, rerolling ones. You can't complain about that. That's, that's a fantastic, fantastic um, dice rolling opportunity for you there. No twos, please. He's got the usual stuff, three up save. He's got a nine halo, four, four uh, invulnerable save. Um, the other thing that I quite like as well, and we had a quick chat about this before coming on here, was the Sigma Ray and how this would play in effect. So Sigma Ray, start your shooting phase. You can select one friendly Imperial Fist unit that is within three inches of this model. Models in the selected unit have a ballistic skill characteristic two plus until the end of the phase. We, we think we're, a we're, a, we're, 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 in opposite, we're in opposite corners for this, aren't we? You think that'd be really good if a dev squad was next to him? Mm -hmm. And I think that you'd only get one opportunity to use it on that dev squad before your opponent goes, well, they're not getting two plus, mm -hmm. they're getting shot off the table. And then he's running around down the field anyway. I think your best with this one is probably sticking 10 guys in front of him and charging down the field and giving them two plus to hit. Yeah, yeah, I think Personally. That, yeah, I think you might be right on that. I'll doff my hat on that one. I'll use him as a batter and run with a with a squad in front and let the squad to play. Let this guy get into combat and smash. Oh, he's good. Him. He's good in combat. Five yeah. attacks with uh, strength twelve. And the, how many characters can you say has that? Strength twelve. It's pretty. No one. No one I know of anyway. It's pretty naughty. That. Pretty naughty. His grav gun. Yeah. Eighteen inch range. Normal everyday grav gun. Uh, it's strength 5, minus 3 AP, and if your opponent's save is 3 plus or better, uh, it's D3 for damage. Also in his abilities, uh, Sage Captain, when resolving an attack made by this model against a vehicle or a building, you want to add 1 to the damage characteristics of the weapons being used for that attack. Well, Basically, if he gets near your tank, your tank's gone boom. It go bye bye. Um, for the players who like to bring buildings to games. Oh, God, no one uses buildings. I think you might be worried. <laughs> yeah, 140 points though, so mm -hmm. still cheap on the cheap side. If you, if you like to play new models, you definitely want to pick up, but bang for buck, I'd choose less mm. Yeah. Um, Because they both pretty much do the same thing, really. I know Tor Garden has got a little bit of a something special way and give a unit two plus to hit, which is definitely nothing to sniff at. Or is that really going to come into play if you're only going to use it on 10 guys every turn? Then your opponent finds out what you're doing on turn 2 or 3 and then shoots that to 5 guys and then he's got to find a better unit to use it on because it's only 3 inches. Yeah, it's once, once sussed, I think it might be reduced. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you run down a dev squad next to him, even the dev squad is going to be hitting on 2s with minus 1 because of the, the movement with the heavy weapons or whatever. It could be nice when you set him against, uh, next to, uh, you know, like a perfect tank or is a box and like that certainly with assault weapons or even weapons like auto cannons where these guys are uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna pick up um uh, they're gonna pick up additional minuses on the ap because of the 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 heavy weapon nature of it so if he's hitting making that you know predator with auto cannon aim at troops and it's in it too plus yeah. you're virtually you, you, you'd wipe things off the table there with that i could see yeah very true very true. i think this is one of the ones that play with them see if you fit your style of uh gaming um if not let's have it model wise it looks fairly cool i mean i'm a sucker for jeremy imperial beagle. fist but, but <laughs> apart from his jeremy beagle hand and he's desperate down the cow pie man chin such a good chin yeah all right manly chin pedro cantor this is the uh, Crimson Fist Chapter Master, and he's 150 points. Rock shot my points up here. Why? Well, you tell me. <laughs> Straight back at you. Basically, he's the old model. I mean, the old model's he's a good model. He's a good model, but he was good 10 years ago when he first came out. Um, so why not just do some, could be something special with him, you know? But they haven't done anything with him, which is fair play, whatever. He's a nice enough model. But 150 points, you'd have to be a pure Crimson Fist player to use him. Because mm. the other two are just a better option unless you are playing pure Crimson Fist. If you if you are Crimson Fist er, um, er. <laughs> he's got a decent stat line, two plus to hit, six wounds, five attacks. Um, but his power fist is only special, which means it's minus one to hit with. Uh, it's obviously times two strength, minus three AP, D3 damage. Um, 
he's got something called author rim which is pretty much the only decent special rule which is add one to the attacks characteristics of models in friendly crimson fist units while they're within six inches of this model it's nice because you compare that with you compare you don't compare you add that with his chapter master um where he's reroll hit rolls um oh actually that's really good you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by models of friendly crimson fist units whilst in six inches reroll all hit rolls yeah, nice. not just the ones, it's the all hit rolls and then yeah. add one to the top. It, that kind of springs to mind uh, the original box artwork to me, where they've got the Crimson Fists on the mound and they're stood and the Orcs are tapping them. It's that kind of that siege mentality to the death type thing. I, I can see how they're con conjuring that narratively there, which is good call. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, bit. don't put your bombs in one room. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Nine times out of ten in the 41st millennium, there will be some kind of horrific, horrific asteroid that will hit your bomb room and then your entire... Yeah, it's going to be... Rimworld, yeah, so two plus save, four plus vulnerable save. Uh, he's got a little bit of staying power, not as much as Lysander, uh, and that is Pedro Canto in a nutshell. Yeah. Verdict on him, do you think? Would you break your neck to go out get him on the pitch? I certainly wouldn't start painting all my marines blue, just so I could use them. Not unless it's ultramarines blue. Okay. Yep, total of crimson fist blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is him. Right, as we turn the Love page. the artwork though. Love the artwork. Don't this is the thing I like it. about Imperial Fist, the power armor is so right. Yellow. Well, to be fair, you were super duper hyped about this codex, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I've read it, and I'm uh, kind of like... this rule alone, it's kind of destroyed your semi, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah it's not, not the edge off it, should we read say. Read out Legacy of Dawn. So, the Legacy of Dawn ability is, whilst the Devastator Doctrine is active, when resolving a tap made with a heavy weapon by a model with this ability against a vehicle or building unit, add one damage to the characteristic of that weapon for that attack. It's decent. Yeah. You it's look not. at some of the other codexes that we're saying, though, the, the abilities have really punched way harder than that. Uh, yeah, okay, they've had a I FAQ don't... and rain in iron, iron hands, but even so, it's still better than that. That's a bit like... I don't even think that suits their nature either. They're called Sentinels of Terror, so they stand on the walls, shoot people, lots of bolt guns, lots of men of wars, lots of people just manning and make sure that they are going to be the bulwark of humanity and it's again a devastated option they get so i'm just a bit like is it really are they really sentinels so i mean if you were going to play that devastator doctrine just do it with iron hands boom blow things up like i said when we get into some of the buffs you'll say some of the buffs really play into the lower ap damage modifier heavy weapons mm -hmm. um so if you're targeting troops for these guys yes if you're targeting maybe Imperial Knights or heavy vehicles for these guys. Not so much. Go for the Iron Hands. That's, that's my kind of view on that. I think no one will be rushing out um, to pay them all the yellow just yet. Which is a shame. Unless Dawn like... comes out and Dawn comes out and he's an absolute freaking beast. Could be. Could so be very boring as well. <laughs> His personality. Um, so yeah, that's the abilities. Uh, but we wanted to just quickly pick through a, a few of the award lord, warlord, put your teeth in traits that you can uh, select um i'll pick a few out uh stubborn heroism uh this warlord cannot fall back when resolving an attack against this warlord half any damage inflicted yeah like that that's okay. nice. that's in your face i'm here deal with me okay you think yeah. that's better than indomitable i didn't say it was better than indomitable i said i like that <laughs> <laughs> but you picked that one over indomitable well, I'm, just, I'm just going through the list in all we're running on. Okay. Oh, and uh, what's the last one you picked? Um, I went for Hand of Dawn, actually. Uh, before the battle, if your army is Battleforge, roll 1d3. You can gain a number of command points equal to the result. That helps. One thing that I think Space Marines or Deckless Astartes are always struggling with is scraping command points together. Certainly, if you've got a farm on there, that helps. But that could be a little. It could be the tactical edge that you need long term in the game. An extra one or two command points in there. It's a good point you make, actually. Yeah, it's uh, it's short term to long term, isn't it? You mm. either make someone just super powerful, or you make your army. Uh, you give that army that little bit of longevity, so you've got a couple extra dice rolls to rely on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A few tricks in the bag. Yeah. 
Uh, Anthony, you mentioned Indomitable. Indomitable. I just think Indomitable is amazing. I think it's really, really good. I think it's especially Fun. good in Lysander. Full stop. And I don't think I'd take on anyone but Lysander, obviously. Lysander has to have it. It's not that I'm yes. saying you have the choice. Um, but with a three plus vulnerable save and Indomitable, it's a toughie. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's another staying power uh, trait there, isn't it? You know, put you right in the face of the enemy. Yeah, you hit us, you're not doing us any damage on one to threes. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Come at me. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I'd agree with that. In fact, in retrospect, I'd probably say that would pick the other two that I've picked, so. And I like flavour though. You wrote something else down? Yeah, just uh, also in here on the Warlord traits, you also get the Crimson Fist. Now, the Crimson Fist, as far as I understand it, uh, you can pick from the Imperial Fists or you can pick from a selection of three Crimson Fist Warlord traits. Um, the one I've picked out, which is an interesting one, is Refuse to Die. The first time this Warlord is destroyed, roll 1d6 at the end of the phase. On 4+, plus, return this Warlord to play with d3 runes remaining. Place them as close as possible to their previous positions, more than one inch away from any enemy models. It's a mini Gilliman. It's a mini, it's a mini it's Bobby a, G. <laughs> it's a mini G. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's, that goes into the narrative as well of the stain power. And I will not be defeated. Like the chapter itself, this Crimson Fist's champion defies death against all odds. There we go. In a nutshell. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, that's fair play. I would choose that one over the other three. I'm not going to read the other, three, other two. Because whatever. Relics, uh, uh, any of these stand out to you? Um, the mm, Duty's Burden was a, was a possibly for me the standout one. I'll, I'll give a quick read. Really? Yeah. Uh, Crimson Fist model with a Mastercrafted Auto Bolt Rifle or Mastercrafted Stock Bolt Rifle only. This re replace, replaces a Mastercrafted Auto Bolt Rifle or Mastercrafted Stock Bolt Rifle and has the following profile range 30, Rapid Fire 2, Strength 5, minus 2, 2 damage. I kind of, kind of, it's kind of suit. So range 30, rapid fire 2, strength 5, minus 2 AP, 2 damage. Mm -hmm. So if you get that the, the tactical doctrine, that's going to the minus 8, minus 3 it's AP. Crimson Fist only though, isn't it? That is uh, Crimson Fist, yes. That's fine. Did you want to pick an Imperial Fist one? Nah, I just think that's very... Meh. That think. was the best selection for me. <laughs> and you know what, you're quite right. Because there's not a lot of other ones that stand out, unfortunately. And this is one of the problems why you're saying the hype's been knocked with this codex. I was expecting so much, I was expecting so much, a bit more. Don't get me wrong, it's good, but it could have been so much better. I think it could have been so much better. You're a bit jaded, aren't you? It hurts. You're looking forward to it. I was. I had models lined up to start the painting. Mm. Imperial Fists, I think they might now be Iron Hands. <laughs> Uh, any of the special killing. war gear? Um, fist of Terror is a is basically a power fist that acts like an additional attack chainsaw. Yeah, so basically it's a power fist, but you don't get your minus one to hit, but you get plus one attack as well. So nice, we like that. Yes, yeah. big smashy smashy. Yeah, uh, you know the one that was uh, the Auric Aquila, a model with this relic has a four plus one little save. When a model with this relic would lose a wound as a result of a mortal, of a mortal wound in the psychic phase roll 1d6 and the 5 plus that wound is not lost. It's kind of... It's only for psychics. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 there. It's it's kind of protecting a little bit. And well, it helps with the stay and power, I think. Every HQ you buy but a psychic pretty much comes in a vulnerable save. Or you mm -hmm. have the option to give them a vulnerable save. Mm -hmm. So, it is, and you know what, that's an absolutely wicked special issue war gear to give to a psychic. It's one of the few things that you think you can give your psycho all these super duper buffs and all these kind of powers and stuff, but when he gets into combat, you're just like, I really hope I kill you first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yet again, that was probably the best of the bad picks that were there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Adamantium Mantle's decent. When a model with this relic lo would lose a wound, roll d6 and a 5 plus, that wound is not lost. Mm. So, it's a 5, 6 rather than a 6. So, that is nice. I like that. Yeah, what, we're, what we're seeing in, in the special edition issue wog is is a fair few of them like digital weapons, mastercraft weapons, uh, and even with different names, there's still the same yeah. kind of ethos in there yeah. regards to the codex. So. Any stratagems? Um... <clears throat> well, was that no? I've picked a few out, uh, I thought. Um, close range bolt of fire was probably 
top of the picks for me. It's two command points. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when an Imperial Fist unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, bolt weapons, models, bolt weapons, models in that unit are equipped with have the pistol type instead of their normal type, e.g. rapid fire 2, bolt weapon becomes pistol 2. I like that because if someone's getting an arm with you, you're literally firing your bolt rifle in close quarters range. You've got to be careful though, because it swaps to a pistol type, I don't think you get the tactical doctrine therefore on that. If someone knows that, there's no. Well, that's my understanding. You still have pistol two, rapid fire one or two though. Yeah, but you would. There's the rapid fire part there. But being in tactical, you wouldn't get any additional buffs from that. I don't know. From you're the, the tactical you're the buff. Buff. That's my understanding of it. There you go. Bolt of drill. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Please. Uh, bolt of drill. There we go. Is here. Here's the strat. It's two command points. Here's the stratagem in your shooting phase. When you choose an imperial fist unit from your army to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit with a bolt weapon on an unmodified hit roll of six scores, one additional hit. You pop them. Pop them. Two CP? Hey, but see, the thing is this these guys can be camped up, there can be things all over them. You can be trying close range bolt of fire to get those additional hits that might get you out of that jam at close range. I think it's probably worth it. But it's still way. 2 CP yeah. for extra bolt fire. Mm -hmm. The yeah. bolt fire is not the best so If I use that work and add D3 as, a, as, a, as an ability at the beginning, with my Warlord trait, roll D3 and get an extra 3 CP, for example. Okay. Might be a bit more than those. I think it's quite expensive for 2 CP because it's only additional bolt rounds that you're going to get, which is just a bit. Bolt, I don't know. Um, and you've got clearance protocol. I'll let you read this one. This is, I think this is quite good. Cool. Yeah, you finished off. Uh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you chose it on me. <laughs> Use a strategy in your shooting phase when an Imperial Fist unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Up to 10 models in that unit that are equipped with grenades can throw a grenade that phase and serve only one model able to do so. That is nice. Mm. I like that. That is, that is crap grenades. They're right in there. That is. That is. Oh, that's frog against massed infantry. If you want to clear a hole to run through, or you want to clear out potentially being swamped or tar pitted, that might be enough mm -hmm. to actually clear it out. That's that's some heavy volume of grenades that's there. I like that one. Did you see what was underneath it? The Praetorian's Wrath. Praetorian's Wrath, yeah. So you play that so and it's... Read it out, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase. If the Devastate Drop is active until the start of your next movement phase, when resolving an attack made with a heavy weapon or grenade weapon by the Imperial Fist model from your army, on a modified wound roll of six, the armor penetration characteristic of that weapon is improved by an additional one for that attack. You can only use this one strategy once per battle. Okay, I'll tell you the reason why I didn't pick this. I was just thinking, because you picked clearance, is it not just a good combo? That's, that's really cool, because loads of people are throwing grenades. Yep. That's what I'm saying. The Praetorian's Wrath is nice, okay? But, let's, let's look at it. So, heavy weapons, that was kind of minus three. No, look at grenade weapon. So yeah. you throw your grenades, so you got so 10 So you were saying, you the clearance protocol with that, with the crack grenades. Well, that can see where that will combo, yes. I would agree with that. But I wouldn't, actually, though. I wouldn't play that way you've got a lot of large cannons, etc. at the back of the field. I would play that way you've got auto cannons and stuff to help that AP to take those troops out, to take those saves out of the range as well. And it's only one use per battle as well. Two CP, it's a fair price. It's a fair price. Did you go over the psychic? I did. I didn't. <laughs> you never do, do you? I don't. You wouldn't think you're an old art player, would you? Old art. <laughs> uh, ones I've picked out, Tectonic Purge. Uh, Tectonic Purge has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, then until the start of your next psych phase, when a charge roll is made for an enemy unit within 12 inch of the psyche, subtract 2 from the result. Nice, okay. That's, uh, that slows them down, get them into hand on combat, basically. You can play with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've also picked Iron Infernal. Um, there's also Chasm there as well. I'll go through Chasm because I know that uh, there's some people are being taught about Chasm as well. Iron Inferno has a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one point on the battlefield roll within 18 inches of a visible uh, and visible to the site and roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 6 inches of that point and a 4 plus that unit suffers one more wound. So it's, it's like an orbital bombardment, but it's a 4 plus. Yeah, and you have it every turn. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Uh, Chasm, I wanted to quickly touch on Chasm. 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 It's alright, what did you say the other day was? 
I usually say Chasm, but continue. <laughs> Chasm has a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit that cannot fly and is within 18 inch of and visible to the Psyker. Roll 2d6. If the result is less than the lowest move characteristic in that unit, it suffers one more round. If the result equals the lowest move characteristic in that unit, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. If the result is greater than the lowest move characteristic in that unit, it suffers three mortal wounds. Yet again, that is more of an infantry killer. Wow. You like that, do you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just a better smart. Yeah. These guys seem to be heavy weapon, shooty, army, take the troops off the field. I like it. I like that one, Carson. Tactical objectives are standard. And yay, we got Imperial Fist name generators. It's nice to see this in all the codexes they're bringing out. Yeah, like they're, 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 getting all the, they're getting all the name generators. You can have Maxim Alvor. Oh, yeah. That's my Sunday name. <laughs> Lord and Thale. Sassy. Sassy. So, and overall, your take. My take is it is a all rounder. I'm going to give it a big fat six out of ten. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I was left a bit wanton with it. Um, I think you want to go heavy weapons, like I said, I think go high in hands, uh, go hard or go home, as they say. Uh, I think these guys are heavy weapons orientated for taking troops and infantry out. Could have done better with the stratagems. Not bad, I'm going to give it a five. Uh, somewhat want so overall go and pick it up though folks uh, certainly if you want to try something different one of the things we've been talking about as well and that I mentioned to Anth earlier is these different factions all seem to be cent centralised around one specific task or set of tasks yeah. and I think it, it, it may correct us if I'm wrong you may see the meta moves you might get a guy who plays Imperial Fist in the backfield or in the Iron Hands in the backfield and they'll take uh, white scars in the front the field will mix and match that metalist up so they've got a strike element and they've got a heavy reserve element that's yeah. in there as well and i think that's where these codexes are really starting to see the strength now as we're seeing more of these codexes so. yeah um but yeah overall uh, it's a medium score for ourselves 5.5 i mean i give it a six because i like lissander i think lissander just bumps it up one point for me yeah yeah he's potentially could be could be naughty but Hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching this. Um, please do let us know uh, what you think of the Imperial Fist Codex. Um, yeah, let us know you give it up a 10. Yeah, and yeah. Why. stick a score in the, in the comments below. Also, while you're on there, please uh, make sure you subscribe and you click notifications, turn on the notifications so you get ding when we get our battle reports and other videos are out there. And uh, obviously stay tuned uh, for our upcoming battle reports and more Codex reviews. And do you want to add anything to that? Stay sassy. That's CQ Gaming. I'm Steve. I'm Anth. Sometimes we'll see you again. <laughs>